Hey guys, good morning, everybody. Uh, happy Monday. Today is Monday, August 22nd. It is 623 right now. Market's going to open in about seven minutes. So I'll go ahead and set up the room real quick and we'll get started with our session for this morning. So just a few things here to update real quick. Uh, that's good. A couple more things here. That's cool. All right, so one last thing to update here, and then <clears throat> we should be good to go. So I'll say, that looks good, that looks good. Let's go. Uh, I think we're good to go. All right, so let me get this link sent out to you guys here in the premium. That's good. All right, I think we're good to go, guys. So let me get a few minutes for people to make their way in. <clears throat> As people make their way in, I'm going to go ahead and mark up the zones right here. So that this will be good to go as soon as the uh, market opens in about five minutes. It's good. And then I'll also check out the news shortly. So I got the zones marked up right there. I'm going to go ahead and mark up the news as well. So let's see who's here currently. So morning, Patricia, morning, Peter, morning, Maria, morning, Kenny, morning, Marco, morning, Pat, morning, Casey. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Monday, August 22nd. So happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully everyone had a great weekend. Uh, it is 626 right now. Market's going to open in about uh, four minutes. So. I've marked up the zones over here for the K2SR version two indicator. Uh, looking over here at the news, let's see if there's anything on the calendar for today. Uh, there is nothing today. Okay, cool. So that's fine. Uh, we don't have to mark anything up regarding the news, uh, but we do have a lot of zones right here, which is a good thing because there's uh, opportunity for a lot of entries here. So I'm looking for something good to take. Um, market's going to open in about four minutes so we'll see what happens in the next few minutes or so so morning seth morning professor welcome back um morning david morning matt morning jez morning everybody so it is 6 27 right now market's opening in about seven minutes or sorry three minutes um let me take a look at the overall bias real quick. I think we're still looking for buys today, but short term, we can look for sales. So looking over here in the long term, retail sentiment is currently 69% short, indicating that 69% of retail traders are currently buying right now. Um, so we should, in the long term, look for buys. But looking over here at the fundamentals are also short as well. It's currently down 351 points. So overall bias, we definitely want to look for some buys. That's going to be overall, right, long term. Looking short term, we currently are looking at sells right now. And the reason for that is because the trend meter right now is currently bearish, right? Uh, down here, the trend meter is currently red. Looking at the pivots over here, they're currently uh, very strong for a sell. Um, but this can easily just shift right back up. So we don't necessarily look at this 
as the end all be all right it's currently dropping right now it's overextended price has been dropping for so long uh, it's about time for it to swing right back up so uh, just because it's been dropping right now doesn't mean it's necessarily going to keep dropping we know what the overall direction is going to be overall direction is going to be a buy because everybody's selling right now so we don't want to do what everybody else is doing right um so we'll see what happens when the market opens up in about two minutes um but yeah overall we're looking for a buy uh long term short term we're looking for a sell right now because it's currently in the sell bias so let me scroll up real quick. A uh, professor's asking me, do we still trade the breakout? We're not trading the breakout right now, professor, because we are in a ranging and consolidating market. We're currently applying the K2SR zone rejection strategy. Uh, this wasn't around when you were around. Uh, it's something that I applied personally just on my own uh, off the lives, but I've taught it to people or we've been applying it for the past couple of months now. It's been great. It works good during ranging market. So if you want to see how that's applied, professor, um, watch the mentoring session from last week and the week before that that'll give you the the detailed breakdown uh the breakout right now is it still works and it's still good but it's not necessarily a safest trade to take because we're in a ranging market where price keeps going back and forth so we're not applying it right now uh with regard to the um live sessions thanks maddie so this one over here is gone uh Deswell's asking when will be we be doing the breakout again uh in the fall so once summer is over say September so in about a month or so uh, once the market starts moving smoother uh morning Jonathan morning Fahad uh Seth said this is going to be an interesting week with technical pointing down but sentiment suggesting we go long I agree Seth definitely morning Matt morning David morning everybody so market is opening in about 10 seconds guys morning sir and we will see where that goes yeah there's a full TP right there Maddie right there it looks like a good one but uh it was too close to market open so market is opening right about now market is now open so uh we're looking for a wick rejection off of the k2sr structure right here right we currently have a sell bias with regards to trend um so overall bias is buy short-term bias is, is a sell uh, we'll see what happens here. You know, price swings all the way up. That's no surprise. We already know what's going to happen. Um, so it's just a matter of waiting for this to retract back to the upside. So this is the opening candle. And you guys can see it's not really moving very much, which is kind of interesting for uh, opening on a Monday, especially. It, it, it moved quite a bit uh, pre market right here, pre market, uh, pre candle open. Uh, and then now this candle here is just kind of being a little dead. Um, and this is why you want to be very careful about these entries here. Okay, so there is opening price. So I've marked up opening price right there. Now we will continue along with uh, the market. So as you guys can see, there's no clear direction at all. Price realistically is just ranging right now, but down here. So realistically, price is just bouncing around this area right here, right? It's not really doing much, going sideways. Uh, and this is where you want to be very careful because you don't want to get caught in these fake outs. Like this can be a total fake out right here. Price dumped, people are chasing the sell, and then it swings right back up, right? Because the overall direction is going to be a buy. Or price can continue dropping. So you just want to put yourself in that in that situation where you're stuck in the position. You're like, damn, what should I do? Right. You don't know what you should be. like. A lot of people will not know what to do. They'll, they'll wonder if they should buy or sell right here. Long term, we're looking for a buy. Short term, we're looking for a sell. And as you can see, price just faked out a lot of people down here. And it is now pushing to the upside. So. Just a matter of patience, guys. And then again, right there, another fake out. So the fake out to the bottom, fake out to the top. Now it's coming right back down. It's just a huge range. As Seth said, in that case, buy and sell, LOL. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. And you can see right there, it's pushing right back up. So we know the long-term direction. We're not we're not like, oh crap, what's going on here? Like, we're not like wondering why is price going up? We know price is going up because long-term bias is indicating a buy. It's still 69% short right here. So um, you just got to wait for it, guys. It's really about being patient and waiting for that confirmation. Uh, Seth said, uh, that's what fake gurus do. 
uh, two accounts, one buy, one sell, see what sticks, and that's what they post, right? <laughs> I know, that's typically what happens. Uh, just gotta wait for it. Uh, professors asking what's RR off is SR zones. It's the same as all the scalps. So it is uh, three to one, professor. It's just like all the variations that we used to take before. Um, but we haven't really lost any, any SR entries. The only loss we had last week was because of my mistake. We took an entry that was not valid. Um, and it happens, you know, we all get FOMO. We all get impatient. We take a trade that isn't really there. Uh, it's really waiting for that confirmation. So it's the same as all the other scalp entries, uh, Professor. But I don't I don't think we've had an SR rejection loss like on live. We've had some like where we've tested it, but I don't think we've had any where we actually lost them because I, I'm pretty particular with which SR rejection entries we take. Um, you know, again, Professor, you got to go back and like rewatch the mentoring session because we go that go over that in detail. But um it's pretty much like the snipe strategy, but on the one, on the one minute with a few more uh, confirmations. So you'll see. Yeah. Maddie said 14 wins and one loss last week. That one loss wasn't valid. Yeah, it was because I took it on accident. I didn't wait for the uh, confirmation. Um, yeah, Maddie said you just got to be super careful because the middle candle can wick last minute. Yeah, exactly. So unless it's like a super... Uh, Unless it's like a super valid candle, like you already know it's going to close proper, then take it. If not, you got to wait for it to actually close. I took it like at the last couple of seconds, and uh, that was just my bad. Yeah, Maddie, Maddie said a risky day today because Monday, with fundamentals and sentiment not lining up, market makers will probably manipulate price. Like, a, like a, yeah, no, definitely. Um, Maddie said, looking for one entry and possibly calling it a day. Yeah, no, definitely, Maddie. I agree with you as well. Uh, Peter said, heat maps all red. Maddie said, lots of wins after the live, but most of the losses come after eight from what I've seen. Um, Seth said, I suspect there will be a theme for the week, actually. Yeah, no, same here, Seth. Um, let me check the news real quick. I don't know what else is going on this week. So tomorrow we have a lot of high impact news. It looks like flash services PMI. So there's a lot of inflation news tomorrow. Uh, it's PMI stands for, uh, I mean, honestly, I don't even know what PMI stands for. I thought it was PC. Uh, but I know this has to do with like the economy and inflation. It's high impact. Um, Wednesday we have medium impact news. Thursday we have high impact news, medium impact unemployment claims. Uh, and then Friday, we have PCE. Okay, so that's what I was looking for, PCE price index. It's the same thing, I believe. Um, and then we have Powell speaking on Friday as well. So we got a lot of news this week. There's just no news today, but there's a lot of news on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So just like what uh, what's, what's Seth uh, mentioned, you know, he's suspecting that uh, there will be a theme for the week. Yeah, so that's a PMI. Oh, that's what it is, of course. So PMI said PMI is a private mortgage interest. Yeah, I, I always forget that. Uh, every time I see I, I think of inflation, but I mean, yeah, it's private mortgage interest, which is it's the same thing. It deals with uh, the economy and, and uh, inflation because obviously if in, in the interest rates are going up, you know, it affects the economy and affects... Uh, uh, inflation so like okay i don't know which one it is a c6 said purchasing manager index i don't know it's one of the others it's either yeah it's either what c6 said or what said said either way guys it just it affects the economy one way or the other or another you don't have to know what it means um it's just high impact so i just keep that in mind Set <laughs> said you're not wrong there, but I should be changed for uh, for inflation, right? Uh, CT, CT said it's manufacturing news. Yeah, no, definitely, guys. I mean, either way, whatever it means, um, it, it's it's high impact news. So just uh, keep that in mind for tomorrow. All right, price is down here. Price has literally gone nowhere. So this blue line right here is where market open. Uh, it's New York open price. Price is literally still there. So as you guys can see. Price is literally just ranging. 
right here, right? Price hasn't done much of anything really. It's just going sideways. So with that said, you don't have to worry about like much right now because nothing is really going on in the market. Let me go ahead and mark up the high lows over here on the clean chart. But there isn't anything going on. Obviously, you guys can see right here. Um, I'm marking up the high low so that you guys can see market structure, but realistically, it's not going to matter because, or actually, this is going to matter because you guys can see there's a lot of liquidity sitting on top right here, right? So what do you think is going to happen if price comes up to this point? Stop loss hunt. So overall bias right now is long-term buy. Short-term is currently a sell. So when price does reach this point, you already know it's going to spike up and this is going to be the target. Right over here, I'll leave this up. So I'm already giving you guys a heads up. This is probably what's going to happen by the end of the day today. Uh, if not by the end of the day, by the end of the week, for sure. You know, all this liquidity is going to get hit at some point um, as the numbers over here start to increase. It's currently at 68%. Sorry, guys, let me fix this real quick. So it's currently at, uh, I don't know what happened with the thing here. Uh, it's currently at 68%. Uh, short, it was at 69. Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people are getting smarter. Uh, as, as we continue to have these live sessions, I've been like warning people about the sentiment here for like years. And I've been trading live for about like three or four years now. I think I feel like people are starting to catch on what the sentiment here is doing uh, because you can see the number here decreased. It's at 68. It was at like 70, 69. Um, the reason for it decreasing is because a lot of people are here getting out of their cells because they know this, this spike up is probably going to happen right here. Um, and that's why the number there is increasing, but we're still going to use it as our overall bias, you know, indicator, basically. I, I think price will continue dropping a little more before it reaches, um, you know, before it swings back up. But as you guys can see here on the clean chart, it's bound to, uh, to come up and hit all those areas of liquidity. So, uh, Dell said anyone else MFF? stuck uh peter said it's moving down so it looks like mff was frozen for a while and now it is moving uh dell said i think i'm gonna chill for the day their server is acting weird <laughs> i mean i'm not surprised uh mff has, has been like that i i personally don't know because i don't trade off mff it's just my copiers um i trade off ftmo so if there's an issue with my copy i'll let you guys know uh, we're still looking for trades here there's nothing much going on Price is still at opening price right here. It hasn't really done much. So the blue line here, opening price. Um, I mean, it's just going sideways right now. It's all right. It's just a matter of time until another zone will come up down here. So these zones over here are still up. This zone over here actually got smaller. So it was like way back here. It's now like actually right there. Uh, this looks like this is gonna be the next zone that disappears. Once this one's gone, another one will open up down here, which is perfectly fine. Uh, that's what we want. So it's a matter of time guys, but we're still looking for a sell here. Reason why we're looking for a sell short term is because the trend meter down here at the bottom is currently red. Uh, pivots right here angling down red pivots over the green pivot that's indicating a sell trend but if it swings back up that's perfectly fine as well Uh, nice. So Al over here actually took, looks like the breakout. So the market opened right here at 630. The breakout was right here. So I don't know if anyone took the breakout, but the breakout was actually right here. Looks like Al took it for a partial move. As I mentioned, we're not taking the breakouts right now because of the market. It's, it's very choppy. It's uh, ranging. 
but it looks like Al here actually took the breakout, took the sell right there, uh, Lockman's whole profit of 2,469. So nice work, Al. Uh, I'm not taking the breakout right now. So, well, I mean, technically the breakout would still be running. It's still currently running right now. It's back to uh, opening price or entry price, uh, but it is slightly in profit. So if you guys took the breakout, great. If not, perfectly fine. I, you know, I don't blame you guys for not taking the breakout. As you can see, the breakout typically hits right away. And if you're in the breakout, it'd still be running. Uh, it's been, market's been open for about uh, 13 minutes now. So nice work right there, Al. Uh, Seth over here as well. So Seth took a couple of trades right here. He's currently up 19,000 for the day. Um, took both trades for buys and sells right here. So he had one loss. It's okay, it happens. Uh, so a couple wins, one loss, still in profit, made the, another win right over here, uh, more profit, another win right here, another win right here, another one win right here. So nice work, Seth. Looks like he took all these trades right here pre-market. These weren't um, during the uh, opening. Let's see, David said, way too risky in my MFF, MT4 froze several times, however, still in profit. So David over here had issues with their freezing as well, Dell. Um, locked in total profit of 34 for the day. So nice work, David. Gotcha, okay, yeah. Seth said his profits were from London. So not too bad. Has got some good uh, pre-market and London entries here. Kenny over here as well. He's uh, just taking 0.01s. I think you're waiting for the reset, right, Kenny? On your account. So he's just trading like small account, uh, small lot size right here until he gets a reset on his uh, FTMO. Currently all wins, no losses though. Two dollars and eighty four cents. If Kenny was using his actual lot size, he'd actually be up uh, two hundred eighty four right now, or two thousand eight hundred forty. It looks like so. Not bad, Kenny. Um, you know, it's got to stay in the game so that you're uh, you're ready for when you get that new account. So yeah, Kenny here he typically takes the same lot size as me, about a ten lot. So this over here would he would technically be up like two thousand right now. It's all good though. It's just a matter of uh, waiting for those account details. So as you can see, price pushed up in our direction for overall buys, but it's still below. So realistically, the range here has been broken yet, right? The same range that's been pushing is literally still pushing. So I'll clean this up a little bit here. But yeah, overall, nothing's going on here. It's literally just going sideways. Uh, all right, so I think that's it for this right here. Back to our normal charts. I mean, as you guys can see, it's literally, so the blue line here, this is like a good, indicator right here that price isn't going anywhere because market opened here at 6 30 it's going down it went up then it went down then it went back up then it went back down and it's back into the uh the range right here so what we're really waiting for is for price to push away from this area long-term direction we're looking for it to push up here uh short-term direction we're looking for it to push below here um but soon enough, we're going to get a zone around this area. So just be patient, guys. It's 646 right now. Uh, we've only been in the market for about, uh, what, 16 minutes? I feel like we've been here for a long time because we've been waiting for something to happen, but nothing's really happening. Uh, Dell said, yeah, it's bad today for MFF. Uh, they've paused again. That's so weird. huh? They might be changing brokers again. I know they were using ACAP for a while. I don't know if they've changed it again, but yeah, hopefully there's no, uh, there's no issues. So I'd probably be careful, uh, Dell. All right, so nothing's going on. Price is still here. There's no zones created below here, but I can see zones coming up sometime soon. If price doesn't cut back into this area over here, or I'm not really up there, but like around this area over here, then I think um, 
there'll be more zones here on this, you know, down here at some point. So just a matter of uh of time until it comes up. Uh, Dell said, yeah, not risking it switching to FTMO. Yeah, I would use FTMO as your main Dell, and then you can always set up a copier for MFF like what I'm doing. MFF already kind of screwed me before. And I mean, I'm not I'm not surprised if they do it again, but they're they're a good alternative. So like if you guys have maxed out your FTMO, I'd use MFF. That's probably number two in line. Um I don't have a number three right now. Patricia said that TFF is kind of good now. So, you know, at some point, maybe I'll go back to TFF, but I think right now I'm currently just going to stick with MFF and uh, FTMO. Because I did spend a lot buying those like three accounts with TFF last time and they screwed me over <laughs> as soon as I got funded. So if you guys are not familiar with TFF, TFF is true Forex funds. Uh, they were good for a while. Um, like during their challenge phase, I traded their challenge phase on the live. I passed it within a couple of days. And then as soon as I got funded and I got the funded account, the whole servers changed. Like it was impossible to scalp on there. So that's why I haven't used them again. But from what I heard, they've gotten better. They're a new company. So, you know, issues, the issues were going to arise from the beginning. Um, but yeah, Patricia said TFF, no issues. Yeah. So maybe at some point I'll try them out. Uh, I don't recommend them yet, but, um, you know, once I use them and, and I get payouts from them and, They've been consistent, then I'll, I'll recommend them to you guys. But currently, right now, not necessarily uh, from my own personal experience. Uh, Rashida said top tier, top tier is good. Yeah, I know I've heard of top tier. Top tier is like, uh, it's Cubex's company. The problem with top tier is you can't use a copier. If you look at their, their uh, if you look at their, oh, Rashida said you can. Okay, cool. So I know like before you couldn't use the copier. Uh, it was like pretty detailed. Like when you try to sign up, it was like, it was right in your face. It was like, can't use no copier. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not using you guys then. Uh, Cause I use copier, but Rashida said uh, that they do allow it now. So, all right, I'll probably check them out at some point. Uh, B said top tier has 20 pips spread on US 30. Okay. Yeah, so this spreads a little wider than FTMO. FTMO is around 16. So they're like a few pips more. I mean, that's not a deal breaker, but it, it is, it, it's it's kind of wide, uh, especially for the scalps. But I mean, if you're taking it as your copier, it's, it, it shouldn't be a big deal because your FTMO is going to execute in and out anyways. So, yeah, no, thanks for the, thanks for the, uh, the input, guys. Yeah, B said, if you don't mind 20 pips spread, there's countless funding companies. Yeah, I know there's a lot. The only problem with a lot of other funding companies is like, I don't really, I don't really trust that they'll pay out like consistently like FTMO. So I've stuck with them. I've been with FTMO for about almost two years now. And they've been, uh, they've been pretty solid. Yeah, Dell said they use vital markets. Yeah, B said, there's plenty that, that have stood the test of time. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of funny companies out there, guys. You just have to be careful with, with which one you use. There is a, I feel like everyone kind of went into the funding space after a while. Um, all right, so Maddie gave us a little update. He said fundamentals are currently down 435 points. Uh, sentiment is down 69% short. So we have a strong bullish overall bias. So let me just, I'll take a look myself. So looking over here, you got still 69% with regard to uh, IG sentiment. Fundamentals right now are currently down 432, 441 points. Uh, heat map here is, update that real quick. It's literally all red. There's one stock here that's green. But for the most part, it's pretty much all red. So right now it's a sea of red. I think they're trying to lure in some more sellers though, Maddie. That's what I'm looking at. Because uh, this here keeps changing, right? It's now back to 68%. So I feel like they're trying to get it to like that 70% mark before they swing it back up. 
they're just lowering in sellers right here because realistically i mean it looks like price has been dropping for a while but this is opening price you guys know exactly what price opened it didn't really drop that much so market open right here at 6 30. price pushed up a little bit like okay about 440 pips that's nothing right that's not even enough to close out the breakout the breakout over here is currently it's it hasn't even hit tp yet <laughs> it's currently uh actually it would have hit cp by now so if you guys took the breakout today this would have been a breakout entry and it would have just actually just hit tp so if you guys take the breakout nice work if not it's okay you know i'm not taking it right now because the market is taking forever i mean if you took the breakout you'd be holding on to this breakout for about 18 minutes it's a long time to hold a breakout you typically want it to hit within the first couple of minutes or so um so just you know fyi so breakout would have hit full tp not going to count it obviously because i didn't take it uh the only trades that i'm take that i'm counting here are the ones that i'm actually taking all right so we got another zone down here this is what we were waiting for so we got one more zone down there you can see everything up here is still cool yeah it looks fine but that is the uh the new zone that just came up. Uh, Deswell said, Sean, when I open my prop firm, you will get a free account. Yeah, now we'll both make a lot of money off that, right? Deswell, once you open your prop firm, I'll, I'll trade on it and I'll add my copier. So a lot of people always ask me to add the cop, add my copier or add them to the, my copier. The only way you can really add me to your copier is if you start a funding company because I mean, my my main concern is just my accounts getting banned, right? Like on FTMO, that's the main problem. Like if if there was a, I mean, there is a way, like I could trade personal accounts, but I don't really like doing that because there's just a lot at risk. You know, someone's real money at risk. If there's funny companies there that I can add copiers to, then, you know, I'd probably use it, but there aren't any out there that necessarily work in that way, right? Because the thing is like, all my trades are executed off FTMO. So like if the spread is off or or their the execution times are off, then it's it's not gonna work well. So it's the main thing. No, <laughs> Peter said start a PAM account. I don't if you guys have been part of K2 for a while, there was this like scammer group. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, they are a scammer group, but we're we're not gonna uh down, we're not gonna sugarcoat it. But if you guys remember. Uh, if you guys were part of k2 like i think it was a long time ago it was like three or four years ago there was this it was funny because this guy that owned this this like copier company or he had a cam account right and you guys have seen him before he's like this indian dude i forgot his name i can't remember i'm not gonna say his name because i don't want you guys to like to, to like look up but there was this guy who he was uh he had a uh, another he had another forex company he um uh, he he joined the K2 group and then he just started spamming. Like he he paid it. He basically went to his group and he was like, I'll pay all you guys, or I'll pay one of you guys like a thousand euros if you go to this K2 group and you guys just like spam his group and say uh that their group is better or whatever. So what happened was his friend or his his clients came to K2 and then they started spamming our group. And then they started to see that we actually were trading, like we were good at trading and we were consistent. So a bunch of his people left his company and let join K2 and he got mad. So uh, it was like during Christmas or something and his PAM account, it ended up like malfunctioning. And then he blew it like thousands of people's account. He was like in the news in the UK. You guys probably have heard of him. I can't remember his name. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a bunch of his members are here in K2 now. Oh yeah, GS3. Yeah. So uh, see, Sam said, yeah, I remember his him. His name was GS3. Yeah, he was on the news in the UK. He came to K2 and he tried to like spam our group, but then all of his members ended up joining K2 because they wanted to learn how to trade, not just like be on his PAM account. But um he blew like a lot of accounts. So I'm not doing PAM because it's just too it's too dangerous. Like if one account or if the the copier or whatever gets um malfunctions, then It'll blow everybody's account. Yeah, Fahad said, oh no, no Christmas for him. Yeah, but it's crazy because like he ended up getting sued and then he just, I don't know how he got out of it. He got out of it and then now he's scamming again. He's now selling e-commerce uh, 
courses. <laughs> it's, it's funny. You'll see a lot of people like they'll, they'll do Forex. And then once they, they get found out they're scamming people, they'll go and sell uh, like e-commerce courses or they'll sell like Amazon stores or something like that. It's, it's, it's funny. Yeah, Sam said he claims his broker scammed him and his clients. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's why I'm not doing. I'm not doing. Uh, I'm not doing any of those PAM accounts because I don't want to end up in that situation, right? Right. I end up having uh, a reputation for for scamming, even if it's not my fault. So, yeah. But I mean, Sam, it's it's funny that Sam remembers that because Sam's been around K2 for a long time. If you guys been part of K2 for like years. Or I mean, we're not even K two anymore. Now Cody Pie trades. Uh, it's just K two spelled out. Um, you know, we've been through a lot. <laughs> we've been through a lot of different groups trying to come and overtake the group. Uh, and I don't know, it's been a fun ride, <laughs> good and bad. All right, guys. So price is back here at opening price. There's nothing going on. It's still. I mean, it's literally not doing anything. So if you guys remember the range over here, the range is still ranging. Uh, yeah, Sam said he's in the UK, so he's selling news reports. Yeah, no, definitely, Sam. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, you guys have seen a lot of different, like, trading companies come and go. You know, you guys have seen who, who standed, like, the test of time with these trading companies. Like, we've been around for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years now. And I've been trading live for maybe about, like, four years now, so... Uh, you guys have seen it. You know, a lot of companies come and go. Realistically, you got to like really understand which ones actually trading and which ones are, are doing something else. All right, so price is not, it's back at opening price. It swung up and then it came back down. It's still back in the range. I mean, the range got a little bit tighter now. So the range is down here. But I mean, either war, it's still going sideways. What's slow Monday? I was hoping there would be some direction today, but there isn't. So if you go over here and just map out from like opening price, this blue line, price has really only dropped 100 pips. Well, where it currently is now. It went up about 400 pips, came down about 400 pips. There's like no volume right now. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with there not being any news today. You know, a lot of people like to trade news. So like when people trade news, there's a lot of volatility in the market. Uh, right now, there's like no news for today. Um, so if today stays kind of flat, which I think it'll stay kind of flat until maybe eight o'clock, it, it always happens, right? As soon as it hits eight and it starts to pick up. Uh, for me, I would say I'm longer with you guys, but we have the mentoring session today. So unfortunately, uh, today's not really, this, it's not the day that I, would like to stay online for too long because for the live, because I'm going to be back in a few hours anyways. Um, but I'll try to stay on with you guys for as long as I can take at least one trade today. Uh, it, it seems like every time we get off the live, like, like literally as soon as we get off, it starts to pick up, but we'll see. But at the moment, there's just nothing for us to take right now. It's, um, it's kind of dead and slow. Uh, yeah, Seth said check the 11 a.m. movements. Yeah, 11 a.m. Is, is really where it picks up a lot, too, because that's like midday. It's like when a lot of people come back from lunch and they start to take their last trades before they uh, wrap it up for the week. <laughs> My dude said end of live and send another link. I know, right? Um. This is only temporary though, guys. So just keep in mind that we're still in the summer. It's currently August 22nd. It's gonna be September in a few days. So once we enter September, like mid-September, late September, the market's gonna pick back up. Uh, this is normal for, for summer season. It's just a ranging market. That's why we're applying the K2SR. I, knew, I know you guys can see that there's a lot of, 
other entries here. Like for example, there's a variation right here, right? A V1. There's a red flag though, because it's at opening price. But if you were to take this V1, you can see right there that it would have hit full TP. So there's a lot of other entries that you guys can take, but they are very risky. So just, um, you know, a heads up. I mean, you guys are more than welcome to apply whatever you want. I don't recommend you guys do though, because market conditions, but you guys can see that they're still pretty much hitting. So let me scroll up real quick. Uh, Deswell said, I started K2 in October, 2019, right before the bubble. Saved my life, thank God, because 2020 was a rough year. I know, right? Because you weren't really flying very much, Deswell. That was when uh, we went into the uh, COVID lockdowns. Yeah, because we'd see you on here like every day. If you guys are not familiar with Deswell, like Deswell's like, he's, uh, he's a pilot. So he used to post like pictures of like him flying and stuff. And during COVID, you know, obviously he wasn't flying. So, I mean, it's good, it's good to see that you're still here. We have a lot of old members here still, like a lot of members from 2019, 2017 when we started. C6 is like one of our oldest members in Patricia. C6, Patricia, CT, a couple of you guys here have been with me since like the very beginning. Uh, yeah, if I forgot to mention anybody, you know, you're still there. <laughs> Okay, so again, nothing's going on. Price is still here at opening price. Um, overall bias is still to take buys. Now you can see price is starting to swing to the upside. This is exactly what we wanted. Uh, there's no surprise that price is pushing up right here. It just basically faked out people that were looking to sell here and now it's starting to come back up. This is completely fine. This is what we want to happen. Uh, what we need to see next or what we'll be looking for is the trend meter down here to turn blue, right? This is one of the main things. So once this starts to turn blue, we'll already have an idea that price is starting to shift back to the upside. Another thing that we wanna look for is for these pivots here to change, right? Because currently right now the red pivots over the green pivot. Uh, once the green pivot goes over the red pivot, this is gonna indicate a shift in, in trend. So with the trend meter here turning blue and then going to green, and then the pivots over here starting to shift to the upside, that's going to indicate that, all right, we're starting to look for a buy here. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of patience, right? We're just waiting for it to happen. Don't enter the buy here right now because we don't have that confirmation yet. And you guys can easily catch a huge trade here if you wanted to, right? If you wanted to, yeah, you can possibly catch something like that. But no, I'm not going to recommend that you guys do that because that's too risky. Um, odds of this playing out are pretty likely, but... It doesn't fit our criteria right now with how we're trading, you know, due to the market conditions. But, you know, don't be surprised if this actually hits. Because you guys saw the trade that I took last week. I took a trade just like this. Um, I don't know what got into me that day, but uh, last week I took a trade exactly like that. Right here, right? Because the bias was strong for a buy. I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to take the trade anyways. I took it and then I locked in a total profit of like 16000 for two trades or for that day. So... You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this plays out because long-term bias is going to be bullish. So it's no surprise if it does come up here. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is that we have all that liquidity sitting right there. So um, if this does play out, I'll, I'll go and I'll draw this up later, but I don't recommend you guys take it. It's just, you know, an idea that we'll see unfold over the uh, next couple hours. So, yeah, no, Seth said a lot of times you'll find some really good continuation was based on bias. Yeah, no, and I agree too, Seth. That's exactly why I see this playing out over here. So I took that same trade yesterday, uh, last week and I made a huge profit off that. I mean, last week was a good week. It was kind of slow overall, but uh, my overall profits for the week were pretty heavy. This is all my profits from all my accounts. I know the profits are weird because I, I don't know, uh, some of the trades didn't copy, like, these are my two MF, two FTMOs and then my MFFs down here. But I mean, overall, it was a great week for me, at least. I think for all of us, actually, yeah. So for the whole week, we had eight wins and one loss on live. So I mean, overall, it was a great week. 
Okay, so let me just continue on. Let's see, Frazier said, if we get a rejection cell signal off the zone of pivots, is it a risky cell into the pivots? So um, quick answer to uh, Frazier's question. It depends on like where that candle is, right? Because the opening price is still right here. So if it's around this area, then yeah, it'll be risky. But if it's around here, so say, for example, we get a weak rejection off the zone right here and it's a red cell signal or whatever, right? If it's somewhere around here, then that's perfectly fine. It's not risky. It's a actual, it's actually a valid entry. If it's like down here, then yeah, it becomes risky because you don't want to be taking trades of where red flags are. So it just depends on like where it closes, but uh if it's like high enough, then yeah, it'll be okay to uh to take. Yeah, Seth said, especially if you didn't take a trade during the call. Yeah, no, and I agree too. Uh, let's see, I think this is Gallo, GG. Uh, GG said, I usually get my best trade at 10 my time too. Yeah, no, it's it just depends on like where you guys are located. We're in different time zones. Uh, I'm Pacific time. I think Gallo, you're like on the East Coast, right? Or in Texas. I know some of you guys are in Texas, so you guys are like an hour ahead of me. Some of you guys on the East Coast are like three hours ahead. So it's uh, it's different. Yeah, CC said, yeah, you were announcing that you were going to quit your job when, when he joined. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Fahad said, are anyone's candles opening and closing at the wrong time on trading view? So Fahad's asking if anyone's candles are closing at the wrong time on trading view. Uh, that's not a, a, an uncommon occurrence. Like it does happen. So um, it, it looks fine to me. I'm looking at my MT4 where I have FTMO and looking at my trading view. It looks the same. So mine looks okay, but it wouldn't be an uncommon occurrence. Like last week, it happened a lot and I did notice it. Uh, Seth's asking, at what point do you look for this move to play out? Um, I think after eight, Seth, because that's when I took that trade. So when I took this trade over here, that same one that we were looking at, it was when price was uh, consolidating. So what you want to look for is for price to consolidate around structure, right? So like, for example, right here, uh, when I took that trade yesterday, or not yesterday, last week, you can see how price was consolidating for a long time here, right? I entered the trade like somewhere around this area. So I wait for that consolidation. Price typically drops down. And then I put like a buy stop there. So I didn't enter here, but I wanted to enter around this point. Price dropped a little bit. I set my buy stop at the um, at the uh, same entry point. Like I drew this up already, but I didn't enter to like way over here, like down here. So I saw that, uh, I saw price swing back up and that's where I entered. Uh, I just entered late. And then I even took a video right here. You can see where I took it. And I was in profit like 7,000 at that point. Ended up closing at like, you know, way more. But, you know, I took a live video of it, of my live profits. Where I was following it. And then my live running profits right there. And then after I closed it, like a few hours later. So it'll probably play out a little later today. Not necessarily right now. Like, for example, I, I do that that markup right here, right? But I wouldn't necessarily take it at that moment. I would wait for it. And then at some point, I'll probably set like a buy stop over here and just take it. You know, whenever it comes to that point, I'm not going to take it today, but I'm just saying like, if you were to take it, that's how I would personally, uh, I would follow it for a while, see if it's like actually going to swing back up. And then when it does, then that's when I would take it. Because you'll see a lot of fake outs right here. Like for example, this is another fake out. Price came up, came back down, came to that point. And then it looks like it's going to swing back up again. So it's just pretty much a back and forth movement. Uh, realistically, if you draw a zone right here, this is the range right now. So it's not doing anything. It's like literally just going back and forth this time. Um, but there isn't much for us to, uh, to really follow along with. So this is why you don't want to enter right away, because this can easily just stop you out for the fake out, and then it'll come right back up. Stop out at that point, and then swing all the way back up. Uh, let me see if there's anything else right here. Uh, 
Right, Bahad's good. <laughs> yeah, Seth said PSC, baby. Shout out to the 6 a.m. traders. I know, it's crazy. Like, I was talking to people, uh, talking to some friends yesterday, and they were like, man, if you look on the East Coast, that'd be like perfect time because it's like 9.30 already. For us here in Pacific time, you got to get up like at 6 o'clock. But we don't really have it that bad, Seth, because, you know, if you think about people in Hawaii, like Kip was living in Hawaii for a while. I don't know if Kip's in here right now. Um, yeah, Kip is not here right now. He's working, I believe. He's a doctor. So Kip's like our doctor here in K2. He's our cancer doctor. He joined K2 and he was living in Hawaii. Uh, man, that guy has to wake up at 3 a.m. to trade. That's that's torture. When I was in Hawaii like a couple weeks ago, uh, I had to wake up at like 2 a.m. just to trade with you guys because I had to wake up at 2 a.m. make sure I was awake at 3 o'clock the market opened and my mask were off. It's crazy. Yeah, it says that, yeah, bro, I used to complain about 6.30 until I thought about Hawaii and probably Alaska. Yeah, no, I agree. CT said it's so nice, though. Like, West Coast, done at 8 a.m. generally, have a whole day. Yeah, no, and I agree with you, too, CT. It's just, if you're not a morning person, it's kind of tough to trade here. And uh, our time zone. All right, guys, so we got another zone right here. It's going to update this real quick. Uh, as you guys can see, new zones are getting created around this area, which is perfectly fine. Like we want the zones to be around this area. So this is what I'm looking for now. Price is still dropping around this area. I mean, it's not really dropping, it's kind of just going sideways. But what I'm looking for is for price to come back up. We test. And then at this point, hopefully we'll have uh, an SR rejection. And then we can just ride this back up, right? So. Price is just in a big range. I think in the next hour or a couple hours, price is going to push above here. And then this is going to be our target area. Um, the only thing that's really uh, that's really going to make things wary is that the, the trend meter here hasn't changed. We want this to turn at least blue so that when it turns blue, we'll be ready for it to turn green. Um, I think what might happen is we're just going to get a spike, like we're going to get a random bullish signal, or not bullish signal, bullish candle. We're going to get a random spike up. It's going to turn green like right away and then uh, come back for the retrace or retest and then continuation back to the upside. That's kind of what I'm looking for here. So this is the criteria that we're looking for for the uh, trend here to change. Yeah, no, exactly. CT said whole day to do something else, not uh, to give back profit. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys just got to learn how to get off the charts. I think that's everyone's problem. Uh, I see a lot of people here who profit with us during the live, and then soon after, they end up losing all the profits, like once we get off the live, because they want to keep trading. So I think my word of advice for that is to really have a routine. For me, I trade with you guys from like 6.30 to 8.00. Uh, sometimes I'll stay on like a little longer and I'll take a trade if there's nothing during that session. But um, for the most part, I usually cut it off. And that's how I find the consistency with my profits and um, in trading in general. So there isn't anything for us to take right now at the moment. Yeah, Maddie said there's a B1 pending, but not one that I would take. So B1 body right there. I'm not going to take it, but this is a reversal pattern. We have a B1 entry here. This might be the start of the pushback to the upside. So double body right there, pinning buy signal. The only thing about this, Maddie, is that um, the technical bias isn't, uh, isn't bullish. So, I mean, it wouldn't fit the criteria, but this is a uh, reversal pattern right here. So let's go back and just review everything again. So. Sediment right here is dropping. You can see that they're still trying to lure in some more sellers, but the sellers are getting smarter. They're um, they're pulling out because they're they're expecting this to swing back up. So this number here actually isn't increasing. Uh, typically, you would see a lot of people bandwagoning on this. Like it'd be at like 70, and you see this increasing to like 72, 71, 73, 75 around there, and that just indicates how more people are selling. But at this point. 
people are actually getting a lot smarter and they're not uh, they're not entering what everybody else is doing the cells here because they know price is swing back up so the smart people are pulling out because they're waiting for this to come back up um, and we're just gonna have to wait <laughs> Not exactly how I wanted to start on Monday, but it's all good. Did it hit, man? This one? No, I didn't. Beam drawdown right now. But it's still running, technically. Yeah, D said starting the week with some discipline. Maddie said, not ready to come back up yet. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, we just gotta wait. There's <laughs> nothing for us to take. All right. Yeah, Maddie said, uh, gotta start the week with discipline and end the week with discipline. Yeah, that's really what it is, guys. Monday, you got to be disciplined not to like FOMO into any of these trades. Like there, there would have been a lot of opportunities here, but I would have FOMO into the cells here <clears throat> because I mean, you guys see price dropping like this. You're like, okay, price has to keep dropping, right? And I know that you guys already have witnessed this. <clears throat> you guys will chase the cell. Like you'll be watching it. You'll see price continue to drop. As soon as you enter that cell, what happens? Price reverses on you and stops you out. It's, it's a... Uh, it's a trap. So, and I know a lot of you guys have, have been in that because that's happened to me a lot of times. You'll see this right here and you're like, oh, this has to keep dropping. There's no way it can, it can, it'll come up, right? As soon as, like, it, it's going to keep dropping just as you watch it, but you're not in the position. As soon as you actually enter a cell, then it's going to stop you out. It's going to swing right back up. So if anybody's looking to take any cells, let me know <laughs> so I can take a buy because it, it happens all the time. Or if you guys are in any other trading groups and they're telling you to take cells, let me know. Because <laughs> if, if uh, someone gives you a sell signal, uh, I, I can almost guarantee it's going to go the opposite way. Obviously, almost guarantee because I'm not going to guarantee anything, but um, it happens all the time. Yeah, Seth said, was about to say, someone take a sell. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys are tempted to take the sell here, but don't do it. Because as soon as you take it, it's going to swing up. Jonathan said it happens when I'm on Friday. Uh, D said it happens all the time. Yeah, no, it does. It really does. It's crazy. It's like a psych psychological thing. Um, that's why a lot of times you can't think. You just got to take the trade. Like if you want to take a sell, take a sell. Don't think about it. Because if you think about it, it's going to be too late. By the time you decide to take the trade and you convince yourself like, okay, it's going to keep dropping, it's going to go the opposite. Or even the opposite, even the other way, guys. If you guys are looking for a buy here, if you guys have the, like this right here, right? There's an intraday entry. You could have taken the entry there, but if you were thinking about it too much. So if you took it right here, it, it would have been a full TP if you took it for like 100 pips, right? If you waited and you're like, oh, I'll enter this late. You enter off this, like, this next candle right here, you would have gone stopped out. Or I mean, depending on how wide your stop loss was. If it's wide, you've been okay. But if not, you won't get stopped out. So um, that's another thing. Sometimes you just gotta go with your instincts. Man, this is like kind of annoying because prices, price is right here. And then it's got a long way to climb now. Well, not really. 600 pips. It looks like it's been pushing a lot, but it's not really pushing that much. Uh, let's see, Maddie said, it looks like it's dropping towards the one hour low at 33,189. Uh, let me check that real quick, Maddie. You know, the crazy thing is that the sessions are way up here. So market open like way up on this area. Price has been dropping ever since and it hasn't really recovered yet. So let me go on the 10 minute real quick. So you can see here on the 10 minute that price has actually been dropping since like last week. So it's really overextended. 
So it's been dropping for a long time. Uh, time doesn't really matter though. What you want to look for is, is distance, right? So right here, price has actually dropped about 8,000 pips without uh, retracement. So it's due for retracement. It's been pushing for a while. Yeah, Patricia said, oh my God, boring. I know it is super, super boring. Uh, Maddie said, I think today's a setup for the rest of the week. Uh, it might keep dropping a bit today, then shoot up throughout the week. Yeah, and I agree too, Maddie. Um, so right now you can see price is dropping. Uh, we have a lot of news coming up tomorrow. We have, an, I don't know if I'd call it inflation news, but we have PMI news tomorrow, flash manufacturing PMI and flash services PMI. This is all basically inflation news. You, you know, it's high impact news. Uh, actually, this isn't even ours. Ours is later. Same thing, but uh, UK is having it, and we're have we're I guess the European countries are having it, and the US is having it as well. Flash services PMI, flash manufacturing PMI. So I think this will continue to drop slightly, and then this will cause volatility in the market tomorrow. We have high impact news on Tuesday, we have high impact news on Wednesday, we have high impact news on Thursday, and also on Friday. Powell's going to speak. So what happens in Powell speaks? It's good for the market. So I think, yeah, like what, what Maddie said, we're just having the setup right now as price continues to drop. And then into the week, price is just gonna, you know, skyrocket back up because it's been dropping for so long now. Uh looking over here on the one hour, price has been dropping, I mean, same day. But looks like it's about ready to bounce at some point too. So we'll see how this candle right here closes. Um, this candle right here is at, there's a zone right here, an SR zone. This one has broken past it, but it hasn't closed yet. It's got about 30 minutes left on it. So it's got a lot of time for it to, uh, you know, obviously swing back up. Let's see, Maddie said, oh, it's the same thing you just said earlier. So I don't recommend chasing this, guys. I, I you know, I know you got, a lot of people are like thinking about chasing this because you can see it waterfalling, but as soon as you enter, it's gonna swing back up. Don't fall, uh, don't fall the further trap there. Let's see if the number here is increasing. So yeah, it increased a little bit. It was at sixty-seven. Now it's at sixty-eight. So as you can see, a lot of people are actually uh, entering into this. Oh, did it play out, Maddie? So, so seven ten. Let me check real quick. Make a copy. I know a lot of you guys like to use these uh, uh, hike and a she candles. We've been kind of playing around with it right here. Basically the SR rejection, I don't recommend anyone apply this strategy, but um, but we've been playing around with it, the pivots. Yeah, that was an inch right there, Maddie. There was a lot of entries actually right here because we had to sell momentum. Let's see. Yeah, the sell momentum was right there. And there were a ton of entries right here, Maddie. I know some of you guys like applying this, like this, this candlestick pattern. Uh, these, so the thing with this candlestick pattern is that it's momentum based. Uh, they're not time based, so it's hard for us to really take entries off these. But there's a lot of entries here, Maddie, that could have been taken. Basically, all the wick rejections off pivots. Uh, well, red candles at least, not necessarily any entry, but yeah, there were a bunch right here. I mean, this is from open, so market open here at six thirty. If you guys want to play around with this, you know, feel free. Market opener here at 6.30, basically you're looking for uh, 
like trades in the direction of the trend and momentum. Uh, red wick rejection. So right here, there's a red candle wick rejection off it. And there were a lot of entries here, actually. It's just something we're playing around with. There's no official strategy for this. Um, it's just the problem with this for us to test this strategy is that you have to do a lot because you can't re you can't back test this. Uh, there's no rewind feature for hike 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 and a she candle. Yeah, there's a lot of these right here, Maddie. So there was one right here at six thirty four. There was another one right here at uh, six forty. Another one right there. Yeah, there were a whole bunch. There was like five or six entries right here. So you guys can see that a lot of these strategies, I mean, they still work fine. Like you can even try them on different things. It's just a lot of exper experimentation. The The funny thing about this right here is that um, I was on Facebook and I saw another company post up about this. You guys see ads all the time. I want to see if I can even find it here. Like this is typically what, what, what I see. I usually see like, um, <clears throat> yeah, let me see if I can find out here real quick. Okay, so I've saved this right here. <clears throat> so I was on Facebook the other day. Well, anyways, let me go back to the charts. There's nothing here, guys, so no worries. We're not missing any trades. I was on Facebook like on, on Friday or Saturday, and I saw this. It was like I became, it was an ad. It said I became profitable when I started scalping. And I was like, that's what we do. We scalp, right? So he said he was a high key she trader. And I was like, okay, uh, this guy says that he became profitable when he started scalping. He started using these candles. So like, for me, whenever I see something like that, I see other people's strategies. I'm like, okay, if, if they're good at scalping, they're using these candle types. What can I use with K2 to, uh, to, to be, you know, to basically mimic what they're doing? Uh, I saw this right here and I was like, okay, cool. And then what happened was I ended up pulling up the high key she candles. I know a lot of you guys like using these candles. Um, and I was like, there's a pattern here and it's super simple. It's like basically look for momentum. So we have a cell momentum right here. Trend meters are red. Pivots are indicating a, a cell trend. And you just look for wick projections in the direction of momentum. So like you basically look for a wick projection off the pivots uh, with a red candle. You already know everything's so here indicating a cell. So I mean, you could just take a bunch of these cells here. Uh, and they work pretty fine. The only problem with this here is that... Um, like I mentioned, you can't back test this. So you have to actually test it live, like during live conditions. So just, uh, you know, just heads up if you guys want to play with it. But again, there's no strategy for this. It's just uh, something that we're playing around with. So yeah, Maddie's going to keep looking at it to see what works and what doesn't. And if it works well, then maybe we'll, we'll turn it into a strategy. But at the moment, there is no actual strategy for it. See. Yeah, I would just chill on the two, Maddie. Uh, Gigi said, yeah, those candles, it's best to use 20 and 50 EMAs. I'll wait till they cross and the wicks. Yeah, I know there's a lot of uh, strategies that you can apply with them. The, the only difference is that they don't, like, you, you can, like, determine when the candle is going to close. Like, if you're looking at this right here, you can see that... Um, like there's going to be gaps sometimes. Like typically they'll be like by the minute and sometimes it'll be like two minutes or three minutes per candle. Uh, they don't necessarily close the same way uh, normal candles close. So yeah, if you guys want to play around with it, you know, feel free to play around with it. There's no official strategy for it, but if you guys want to test it out, uh, you guys can. So Man, it's 7.30. We've been on the session for about an hour. No entries. 
already know as soon as we get off the live, it's gonna be entries are gonna come flying in, which is kind of annoying, but it's better to be safe than sorry, especially on a Monday. Uh, Rashida said she has a hike in a she kennel indicator. Yeah, uh, I know there's indicators for it on on um, MT4. I don't know if they have these type of kennels, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily use an indicator for like the kennel types, right? I would just do your analysis off of the um, off of trading view, and then you can enter if you really wanted to, but I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. So again, right here, there's another one. There's a, actually two of them right here. One right here that was currently running that we saw live. So this one right hit TP, Maddie. That one right there, full TP. We saw this one actually come up on the live. Uh, and then again, right here. So both of them would have hit full TP. There's two entries that came up right here exactly during uh, the live session. <clears throat> um, yeah, exactly. Patricia said, just have to be careful on timing MT4 and TV. Yeah, so if you were to enter a trade on here, you would have to enter it off trading view. Like you wouldn't even look at MT4 because the candles are completely different. I don't think you can even have the candles on there, Maddie. Because I'm looking at my empty port, there's bar charts, there's candlesticks, and then there's line charts. There's no actual, like, built-in hiking on sheet candle that you could have. That's why they look different. They're not the same candles. So you got to um, you gotta just keep that in mind. Yeah, Maddie said we'd have to anticipate a 20-point move, 20 point move on trading view for it to hit. 10 points on MT4. Yeah, because they're not going to line at all. The, the candle types are completely different and they're not time-based. So that's why I don't trade hike, hike and Ashi. I know it, it looks good like because like after it happens, but if you're doing it live, it, it it's not as as simple as it looks. <laughs> so just you know something to keep in mind, guys. Um but yeah, back to the charts over here. There's nothing for us to take at the moment. Yeah, Maddie said, going to keep it simple and stick to what I know. That's the best way to do it, bro. I wouldn't necessarily go off go off from what we're currently doing right now. Um, let's see if there's anything that I'm missing right now. It's so bad. I just got a voicemail from my, my Lyft driver from yesterday. I was at the Chris Brown concert. This dude's asking if I still need a ride. <laughs> like, bro, the concert ended like eight hours ago. <laughs> weird yeah for some reason my lift driver's like messaging right now if i still need a ride uh let's message it out there it was super late all right guys anyways back to the charts nothing for us to take at the moment there's i mean literally nothing for us to take right now there's no zones around this area the zones here are still pretty much the same yeah there is nothing for us to take right here. Here's a clean chart. Let me just update the high lows here. This will just give you guys a better understanding as to like what market structure is looking like at the moment.
Yeah, I mean, there's no, if you look closely, you can see that the market is still ranging right here. So this is a small range. And this is the, uh, big range. So I mean, realistically, it's just ranging right here. Let's see, JJ said, GG said, let me find out you paid 1K to pose with Chris Brown after the concert, JK. I know it's crazy, right? People are actually paying for that, for that, for that VIP to uh, take a picture with Chris Brown and pose with him. Like a lot of people are doing it and Chris Brown's making bank off that. But no, nah, that, that, that would never be me. Um, you guys have probably seen it like on world star. It's crazy. A lot of people are actually paying for that stuff. It's, I mean, some people are like huge fans though, so it makes sense, but <laughs> yeah, Jason said, up we go, Sean. I know. Right. All right. So price is finally going back up guys. I mean, not necessarily it's still down here, but it's trying to make its way up. So here's market structure right here on the clean chart. As you guys can see, there's not really much going on. I have the, uh, range drawn up right there. It just keeps creating a new range. Like for example, we had a range right here. So we had a range, dropped a little bit back into a range right here. And there's like not really much going on at all. Pretty much ranges, breaks down, goes back into a range. For, from my perspective, I think this is pretty much just setting up for that push to the upside. Let's take a look at sentiment again. Sentiment here is dropping. So a lot of people are, I think a lot of people are anticipating the same thing we're anticipating. They are um, pulling out of themselves here, their shorts, because they, they know that that push up is going to happen at some point. It's been overextended for too long. So they're waiting for that to come back up. Ah, oh, man, what a slow day. Let me go over here real quick. So here's opening price. Let's see how far price has actually dropped since open. So market open here at 6.30. Price pushed up 400 pips. And then it's dropped down 1,000 pips. So that's like nothing. Uh, typically, you'd see about like at least 1,500 pips. So on a normal day, not necessarily in the summer, but on a normal day, this is how much movement we'd see, right? At least 1,500 pips. This is like bare minimum movement on like um, a non-summer trading day or on just a regular day in general. But you'd actually see it drop this much. It, it got close to it, but it not necessarily. Now it's pushing back up, so now it's even smaller. Um, but yeah, typically you want to see, like this is like the range for US 30. The only reason I know this is because we've been trading this live for like years now. So we've, we've traded all seasons. We've traded a lot of summers. We've traded a lot of uh, falls, a lot of winters. Um, this is like a threshold. If it doesn't move this much, then market's considered slow. Um, obviously, you can see it hasn't moved that much yet. And an, another, uh, another benchmark for this is going to be the daily entry. So let's go to the 10-minute real quick. I don't think there's a daily today. Not yet. Okay, so I think it's setting up for it. So if there's a buy signal that comes up here on the 10 minute, then that would be the daily entry, right? So if we get a daily entry like that, uh, it, it's pretty much giving up that, that opportunity. So like, for example, if we get a buy signal at some point right here and it pushes up, that's gonna be enough for it to hit the daily entry, full TP, 1,500 pips. So we don't have that yet, but um, if we do get it here on the 10, that's kind of uh, the range there. So I just wanted to give you guys some perspective to see uh, and understand like, you know, where we really are in a summer uh, cycle where the volatility is super low. Um, I mean, you can just go back to like any other day. Like if you go back to like, let's see. Let me just go to uh, like a random chart here. So if you go on the 10 minute, 
And let's just go to like before summer. So July, let's go to like February or something. Or even April, right? So if we go to April right here, So this is April and market opened at 6.30. Right, and I'm gonna give you that little range that I drew earlier, right? So market open right here at 6.30. This is the opening candle. See how, more, how much prices drop? Like 10,000 pips. Um, earlier, I just drew right now, the 1,500 pip range, right? So this is the same thing I drew over here on the one minute, right? I, I drew that and I was like, okay, that's like the normal range. Like if you see that and price is actually moving, I, I drew it over here on the, uh, on on in, August, in April or May actually. And you can see it happens in like 10 minutes. In the 10 minute time frame, it drops 1,500 pips. So that'll give you some perspective as to like summer conditions and, uh, spring conditions like outside of summer so like if we go to like to another date here i, I just want to show you guys another example you know again right here market opened at 6 30 this is the opening candle we don't even cat count the opening candle right 1500 pips this happens within like 10 minutes or 20 minutes or so so like comparing this like 1,500 pip to like where price is currently at, it's been like almost an hour and it hasn't even moved that much. So that's how you guys can see that. This is a really, really slow market. I'm just showing this to like the new people, not necessarily new people, but um, people who aren't like as experienced trading in the summer. Um, you guys will see that this is a slow period. We're not gonna have a lot of entries during this time, but when, summer ends you know it's going to start to pick up a lot more so the same so i drew 150 points here and it's been how long has it been we've been waiting for about an hour and 16 minutes hasn't even moved that much you look over here in like spring i mean that happens in like 10 20 minutes or so that same exact price movement 150 points here versus 150 points today like and there's there's like no comparison so it's all good guys i mean if you guys are starting in the summer here's the thing that i want to like emphasize if you guys can profit in the summer you guys can profit in any season that's like the, the thing here this is a good time to practice and get good at our strategies so that when the summer ends you guys will be ready to to really catch those quick moves um but um, yeah, I mean, if you guys can, if you guys can probably, because if you guys are in other groups, you guys will see a lot of people are struggling right now. The summer session is usually tough for a lot of people. Uh, this is like the perfect time to practice, master the strategies, get everything down, ask me questions, get stuff, you know, really drilled in so that when spring or summer, when summer ends and then we enter fall, uh, you guys will be ready to just take every single trade that comes up. So it's getting close to eight, guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put your questions in the chat. You know, I'm here to help you guys out. I want to make sure that you guys are as successful as everyone else in the group. Um, unfortunately, there were no official trades that came up today. As you guys can see, price is still ranging around this moment. Um, you know, just a heads up, we're having our mentoring session today at 2 p.m. Pacific. So if you guys have any, like, detailed questions, make sure to attend that session. And we can go over examples, uh, and I can answer pretty much whatever you guys need help with in detail there. If you guys have any questions right now, feel free to put your questions in the chat. I'll answer whatever you guys need help with. But at the moment, it doesn't look like we're going to have any entries at the um, at this time. I was really hoping for at least one entry. Um, the only reason I cut off at eight is because from our testing, and I think Maddie's, or I, I posted it over here before. I posted the... Uh, spreadsheet i don't know if you have an updated spreadsheet maddie or here let me check it real quick because i think you sent it to me um all right let me just put this over here real quick 
okay, yeah, Maddie's going to send me the whole month. So this is the spreadsheet from last week. Uh, we had about 14 wins and one loss. The loss here was my fault because I took a trade that didn't actually, there was no entry there. Uh, we just fumbled into that, but it doesn't show here, but I don't know if you have like the other times, Maddie, like after eight, typically the losses come after eight, like 630 to eight, it's like all wins. And then you, you trade from like eight to like 11 and there's like maybe like one or two losses, but uh, let's see this from the Thanks, Maddie. So Maddie's been testing this strategy for a while now. Uh, right here is the entries. Okay, yeah. So uh, as you guys can see, this is the breakdown. Maddie actually like deep back tested the strategies here. Um, okay, cool. So you can see from like 630 to 8, this trade here shouldn't have been a loss. This is like, this is my fault. But you can see the only loss that happened. There was about like 25 wins on Monday, August 1st. Uh, there were 25 wins and one actual loss, uh, this one right here. And this happened at 10 o'clock. Uh, again, right here on the second, there was 18 wins and one loss. This happened at 10. Um, it seems like a lot of the losses that happened last week happened either between 10 or like, between 8 and 10, basically. Uh, on the third over here, Maddie has one loss here at 10 o'clock again. 16 wins and one loss. Uh, on the fourth, Maddie has one loss here at eight o'clock. So this trade came up at 827, one loss. Um, total trades for that day, eight wins, one loss. Uh, on the fifth, five wins and, and zero losses. So like for this first week, basically the first week of August, and these are summer conditions, low conditions, there were a total of 75 or 72 wins and only five losses for the entire week. Uh, on the live, we took 22 wins and one loss. So that was August week one, <clears throat> uh, last week or the second week, August week two, uh, there were about 14 wins and one loss. The only loss came, uh, at, uh, or actually this is week three. There were eight wins and zero losses for August week two. This is from last week. Uh, the only loss came was from the mistake that I made, but I mean, this is pretty solid. So I'll post this up in the group, guys, if you guys want to come and see this. I mean, you know, the numbers here will, will give you guys the confidence in taking these trades because Maddie is pretty much, he's taking the data here so that we can follow along. And he, he'll put which strategy he applied right here as well. The SR, intraday scalp, et cetera. Um, and I'll post this up in the group if you guys want to see it. So... So there you go, guys. Um, you know, that's the only way you get better. That's why Maddie's such a good trader. Maddie's only been trading with me for like, you know, about a year now. Maddie's surpassed a lot of people in the group uh, with his consistency. You know, it's all from practice. So we got some profits over here that have been posted. Let me see what else we got over here. Uh, so some profits here from Kenny. He's up. Oh, this is his other account that he showed earlier. Uh, we got Scotty over here as well. Scotty's up 650 for the day. Nice work, Scotty. I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like you kind of took trades off the analysis on the live uh, for the sells there. You just hopped in, hopped out, quick profits. Um, Patricia over here as well. Patricia made some profits for the day. She's up 1550 for the day. Nice work, Patricia. So solid profits right there on your MFF. And then on your FTMO, you're currently up $1,924. So not bad, Patricia. I mean, not bad for Monday, right? Slow day like today. Uh, David said profits for the day. See tomorrow, Sean. Uh, you're the best, definitely. So David over here at Locking, a total of 72 for the day. Nice work, David. Uh, Charles over here as well, currently up 288. So great work right there, Charles. Um, Valentino over here, currently up 866 for the day. So, I mean, it's not bad for a, a slow day. There aren't any, there's anything necessarily for us to take at the moment. So Scotty here took another trade, locking a total profit of 1,155. Nice work, Scotty. Yeah, Patricia said, yeah, I'll take it on a weird day. Weird today. Yeah, exactly. 
I mean, any profit's fine, especially on a day like this. Um, so yeah, guys, it's getting close to eight. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to have any entries for us to take for the day. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, we'll be having our mentoring session in about six hours. So um, probably going to take a break for a bit. I don't think I'm going to trade after eight because it's just nothing for us to take. Yeah, no, Stanley said, I think we may have a move soon. Yeah, no, and I and I agree, Stanley. I do think price will start to move um, after eight. The only problem with that is that the market starts to get a bit risky because at that point, um, so it's eight o'clock here, nine, 10, 11. So it's going to be 11 o'clock in New York, Eastern time, right? So I know it's, it's that's where you're from, Stanley. You're not from New York, but you're from like DC, I believe, right? Uh, at that time, that's where a lot of the stock traders go on lunch. So that, that's why I don't trade between like eight and like 10. Because like between eight and 10, you get a lot of these weird movements. That's usually because a lot of the retail traders start pushing price around like randomly. Uh, and then when it comes back to 10, when people are back from lunch, that's usually where the market starts to move smooth. So I think the sweet spot to trade is a 6.30 to eight. That's like our time here on the live. And then if you wanna trade again, like after 10, tend to like market close um but yeah like eight to ten is like lunchtime so you start to see a lot of weird movements uh around that period so yeah guys unfortunately it doesn't look like we're gonna have any entries for today uh which is okay today is monday uh, i do see the market picking up as we progress through the week so looking over here at sentiment sentiment is currently 66% short, so it's still indicating a buy. I think price can shift up at any moment. Uh, looking over here at the fundamentals, fundamentals are still down almost 500 points, super, super big. Um, looking over here at the uh, heat map, the heat map looks like it's completely red now. Yeah, there's no green stocks. Looking over here at the stock index for the Dow. Yeah, literally everything here is red. There is like no green right now uh, at all. So I think with that said, price is just going to stay where it's currently at. This is now the range. Right there. Yeah, like literally nothing going on. So it's just ranging sideways at the moment. Um, so you guys can see the range here that I drew up. I actually drew this up like 30 minutes ago. It hasn't even broken out. I mean, it's broken outside of it, but it hasn't really done anything. It's still uh, going sideways. See, Maddie said might bounce off the one hour and shoot all the way up. You know, this candle here hasn't even closed yet. Yeah, the next zone is going to be like way down here. Oh, gosh, yeah. One hour low. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that could happen. All right. So let me just update this a little bit over here. Yeah, Maddie said, I don't want to anticipate any movements in this market right now. Patricia said, yep, acting weird. Yeah, it's not really worth the, the risk, guys. I mean, you guys can take the risk and, you know, probably catch this pushback to the upside because there is a lot of liquidity sitting up here. I would probably wait for it, though, but this whole area here is going to have to get hit at some point. I think it's going to get hit by this week. Um, might not happen today, might not happen tomorrow, but I think by the end of the week, it'll happen. Uh, the reason why I think price will push up is because all of the news coming up today's a flat day there's no news today so that's why you don't see much volatility in the market on tuesday we have a lot of news uh this is going to happen during our live so this news happened at 6 45 we go live at 6 30. so during our live trading session we have two like high impact news events uh we have flash services pmi tomorrow uh then we have flash manufacturing pmi 
we have new home sales, Richmond Manufacturing Index, all in one day. So this is going to happen during our live session tomorrow. Um, on Wednesday, we have a uh, core durable goods order to medium impact. This is pre-market. Then during our live, we have pending home sales. I think this is going to be negative. Um, and then we have uh, crude oil inventories. Then on Thursday, we have prelim GDP. This is high impact, obviously. This is all pre-market. We have uh, prelim GDP. We have unemployment claims. Uh, prelim GDP, all at 5.30 pre-market. And then during our live session, we have natural gas storage. Also, we have the Jack Hole uh, Symposium going on as well. So we got a lot of stuff coming on. On Friday, we have um, a lot of news as well. We have core PCE price index, good trades balance, personal income, price, uh, personal spending, prelim wholesale inventories. And then we have Powell speaking at seven o'clock. So guys, I'm just gonna give you guys a heads up. On Friday, we're not gonna have a live session. Uh, not specifically because there's news, but this is going to be a big factor too, because we do have this high impact news right here at 530. Also, we have Powell speaking at seven. He's going to speak for about like an hour or so. So this just isn't going to make sense for us to trade, right? Because we don't want to trade when he's speaking. Um, but the real reason why I'm not having a live session on Friday is because I'm going to be in Cabo uh, that day. I'm flying out. And my again, like, unfortunately, guys, my flight kind of conflicts with the live session like happened when I went to Hawaii. So I won't be having... Um, a session on Friday. So just, I want to give you guys a heads up right now so that you guys aren't expecting a, a live session on Friday, but it's okay because we have high impact news this day anyways. Uh, Maddie's asking who I'm going with. I'm going for a uh, for bachelor party. It's one of my boys from college. So uh, yeah, I know we got to take a trip to Maddie, me, you and Tommy, <laughs> whenever we can get uh, something set up. Yeah, I do want to go to Cancun and go out there. We'll have a K2 trip. Maybe we'll have a meetup out there, right? <clears throat> we'll just have a lot of people if anyone else to come. Probably do some live trading there too. Yeah, I know it is cheap. <laughs> yeah, MJ is who you're invited. All right, guys. So back over here on the charts, there's another zone created over here. But um, unfortunately, yeah, thanks for the heads up, uh, Pat. So there's a new zone that got created right here. The only problem with this here is even if we get price to push up, the uh, trend meter here still hasn't changed. It's still red. We need it to turn at least blue. So if it pushes up, yeah, possible entry right there, SR rejection off the zone and continuation, we can possibly get that. But um, you can see here that the pivots are still angling down pretty heavy. It's currently at the London low. So... This might be the area where it bounces from. So the London low just got established right here. And it looks like, um, you know, possible balance can happen at this time. It is eight o'clock though, so it doesn't look like we're gonna have anything to take at the moment. Uh, let me see if there's anything that I'm missing here. <clears throat> uh, Mace is asking, my FX book seems to have more news information compared to Forex Factory. Any relevance to uh, US? to us in terms of trading. Yeah, no, I've noticed that too, Mace. Um, I actually have it here, where is it at? I have my FX book here as well. I just don't really look at it very often. Uh, they do have a lot more news events. Uh, most of the time they're low impact though. So like, I know there's uh, news events coming up right here in about 28 minutes, it's low impact. So it doesn't, I mean, it does have relevance because it's good to know when there's stuff going on, but, uh, Forex Factory typically has like the um, it has the news that that actually affects the market, right? Like you'll see something like this here on my FX book. A lot of the times it'll align, but you're gonna have times where it's just uh, it's like low impact. Like this isn't gonna do anything. So, uh, short answer to your question is yes and no. It does have relevance, but it's not necessarily super important. Like it's not like a make or break your you know your trade and whatnot. So. I would look at both if, if you have the opportunity, but for the most part, uh, Forex Factory, I would definitely focus on these. Um, if you miss something on MyFX book, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make a huge difference unless it's high impact. Sometimes it's gonna be, there's gonna be some high impact stuff on here. All right, so as you can see, price is now, is now starting to swing back up. The um, <clears throat> trend meter here is turning blue. However, the pivots here are still not uh, switching. 
So with that said, even if you get a buy entry, like if you get this setup over here that plays out, it's going to be a setup, but it's going to be a risky setup. So just, you know, keep that in mind, guys. Um, typically, you want this to align. Like you want the trend meter to be bullish and you want the pivots here to indicate bullish as well. So uh, not to say it won't hit because I do think it will hit, but I just don't know when it will. So let's see if there's anything else here that I'm missing. Uh, Pat says, I mostly use economic calendar posted on FTMO. Yeah, you guys can use that too. There's also a calendar on FTMO if you guys want to use that. Uh, they're all good. There's no um, right or wrong way to do it, but you know, the, the, the more information, the better. Uh, let's see, Patrick said, I'd be looking more for a sell bounce off the top of this range new zone, I think. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, you could look for that too. Patrick, but you have to wait for the sell signal, right? So um, that's going to be the, the downside to it because we do have a bullish momentum now. So, and this, the trend meter started to shift. So, I mean, yeah, in a sense, you can take either direction. Like if you get a wick rejection off here for a K2SR and you have a sell signal, then yeah, great, you can take the sell. Uh, vice versa, if this turns green and this starts to shift, then you can look for a buy. So you can really take, you know, whichever direction that, that the setup gives you but you just got to make sure that the setup actually uh, uh, confirms. So, all right, guys, it's 8.04 right now. So unfortunately, no entries for the uh, live session today. It's okay. It's Monday. So we have a whole week ahead of us. We have Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday uh, to take trades. So, you know, it'd probably be best to just conserve your capital for a better trading day. Today was just really slow. There wasn't anything for us to take. Price was so far from the zones that we couldn't even, I mean, necessarily look at anything. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't see any questions in the chat. So I'll be back in about six hours, guys, for the mentoring session. If there's any questions that you guys have and you guys can't attend the mentoring session, just send them over to me and then I will add them to the list. And those, those will be the first questions that we cover. Otherwise, it would be best for you guys to actually uh, attend the mentoring session so that I can answer your questions uh, real time. <laughs> yeah, Maddie said this is the account, nothing. Same with mine, guys. I got nothing on my accounts for uh, for today. Uh, let's see, Ross over here currently up 2,650. Nice work, Ross. So Ross has been taking, uh, you know, just trades off the live. Looks like I can see the timestamps here. Took a lot of trades here off the, like during our live session. He did pretty good. So nice work, Ross. And great work on letting them hit your TP. I can see the green strips here. So you actually let them run. So solid work right there, Ross. Uh, Maddie said had some amazing profits today. Another thing. Um, yeah, Patricia said great job, Maddie, but also smart. I agree. And Nelly said, I caught those exact same trades. Nice for <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely, guys. All right, so I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me or message me on Telegram. Otherwise, I'll be back in about six hours for the mentoring session. So if you guys can attend that, I will see you guys there. Otherwise, I will catch you guys back here tomorrow morning for the next live session. Lots of news tomorrow, so I think the market will pick up, but we'll uh We'll take it as, as easy as we, uh, as it comes. So, all right, guys, other than that, have a great rest of your day.